Hi everyone, welcome to the IoT Hero Show, my weekly showcase of thought leadership on the Internet of Things. My name is Tom Raftery, I'm the Global IoT Evangelist for SAP, and now, on with the show. Hi everyone, welcome to the IoT Hero Show. My name is Tom Raftery, I'm VP for IoT at SAP, and today on the show we have a special guest, it's uh, Dion Hinchcliffe. Dion, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, absolutely, Tom. Thanks for having me uh, uh, on the podcast. Um, so I am uh, a senior analyst um, and VP at Constellation Research, a ZDNet columnist and all-around troublemaker, and <laughs> spent a lot of time on IoT strategy with C-level executives. Awesome. And Dion, we've known each other for a number of years. We're both members of the Enterprise Irregulars uh, group. Uh, we publish in the Enterprise Irregulars site. But this is our first time actually collaborating on anything. And the reason we're doing so is because in SAP, we have our Leonardo Live event next week. And you're one of the speakers at the event. So I wanted to have a discussion with you about that, about what you'll be speaking about at the Leonardo Live event. Well, uh, so Internet of Things is obviously uh, top of mind for so many organizations as it's going to allow us to be connected 24-7 uh, to our customers, to our partners, our whole supply chain. Uh, and it's changing a lot of what we can do. And, and the whole issue is the amount of data that Internet of Things is going to create for us. It's going to create an explosion of, literally, it's not hyperbole, several orders of magnitude greater than the current data streams that our enterprises have to deal with. And this is really opportunity. It's not, you know, it's not overload. You know, the, the, you know, the famous Clay Shirky um, uh, quote, you know, we want this information, but what do we do with it? So analytics has become an extremely important component. Uh, and so how do we reconcile these vast new data streams coming out of the world of IoT and edge computing and all, the, and all of those hot topics with what do we do with it? How do we understand it? How do we make use of it? So I'll be talking about that uh, and exploring what, um, you know, the whole, the whole mindset we have to have to be analytics-centric companies uh, when we're connected to our customers 24-7 is that it's a land of opportunity, but it's also a great deal of greatly challenging for most organizations to really prepare for this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I come from, um, I come from an energy background. Uh, in, in the last number of years, I've been working in the energy space before joining SAP. And one of the big things there for the last number of years has been the rollout of smart meters, for example. And for utility organizations, uh, they typically would have taken a meter reading every month or every two months. So, you know, maybe 12, maybe six meter readings a year. And now with smart meters, they're going into having uh, meter readings every half hour, every 15 minutes, even in some cases as granular as every five minutes. So your, your point about the orders of magnitude, greater amounts of data, is brought home right there. And obviously the utility companies are not unique in this. We're talking about vast, moving from, you know, point solutions or, or point, you know, getting points of data once in a while right through now to getting lakes and lakes of data. And the analytics is, is really vital to this because that's where you start to make sense of the data. Yeah, no, the, um, when you say data lakes and lakes, you know, it, it kind of conjures up visions of all of these silos again. And, and really, you know, that's the whole thing is, you know, the data will be coming into our organizations. Uh, it, the risk is we'll be stuffing it away into our different functional closets again, right? Into, into whatever cloud services that we have, and it'll be parochial, and it's not really going to. We're not going to be able to strategically take advantage of it. And one of the things I'm going to talk about, and you know, this is what Tim O'Reilly famously said, is uh, my data tends to be better when it's with your data, mm -hmm. and that's you know one of the big insights is you know like the utility example. I'm actually came from the utility business you know a couple decades ago, and. And we could talk about SCADA systems until uh, the cows come home. You know, you know, uh, uh, the, the challenge really is, is not the individual view of that data, but what you can tell your customers based on uh, other customers like them. You know, are there, is their power consumption good? Do they have a, a potential issue with, with uh, power consuming devices? You can only tell that when you're looking at the full set of data. It gives you insights you couldn't have by looking at isolated sets of, uh, sets of data. So I use that example to show that that the more we combine our, diff our available data from all the different sources, the deeper insights, the more interesting correlations, um, yeah. uh, the things that, that we can, the value that we can create that wouldn't be there otherwise when we, when we have this kind of isolated view. So 
a, a more holistic view of analytics is, is where I think the whole industry is going. And IoT is really going to require that. For you to be competitively um, significant in this space, you're going to have to think think big and think about how you can combine all of this into uh, into value that that you derive from looking at all this information. And I think that, uh, and, and I, why I think like meter reading is, is you know, going to continue to be, you know, it's going to be basically real time and, and you'll be able to tell what every power, every device in your house is, is throwing off and all that granularity is coming. It's the rich media. It's like, you know, the, 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 uh, the video and the audio and the home, the home and business monitoring services, uh, like Nest and, you know, the things that they're offering, uh, is this really rich data that we're going to have to put a lot of analytics on the edge to be able to do things like facial recognition in real time. And, and there's just going to be a tremendous amount of compute power uh, moving out there as well as analytics power moving out to the edge. And so we'll be talking about that. How do you, you know, how do you operationalize around that? What are the rules for thinking about well, what do I do centrally versus what are, where do I put out, you know, in the fog, as they say now, right? Yeah. So it's going to be, it's an interesting time. It is. I mean, if you think of an edge device, if you think of maybe a flow control valve or a temperature sensor or something like that, I mean, if that temperature or flow control valve or whatever it is, is constantly saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, wait, what was that? No, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. You don't want to be sending all that I'm fine data back to the back to back to the cloud or back to base or whatever. You need something at the edge, and this is the, this is the, the whole rationale behind edge computing. It's maybe that one time where it says, "Oh, what was that?" You know, then you maybe want to send information back and and process it and see what's going on. How 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 mature or how prepared are large organizations to deal with this level of data and to get the information out of it? Well, and, and that's the issue. The more primitive you are, the, the harder it is for you to do because, you know, take a smart city example where, you know, your traffic lights all have cameras now and they mm -hmm. all can see w when accidents occur or when, when uh, there's, there's a traffic jam. Uh, do you want to stream, you know, thousands of cameras worth of live video back to your data center to sort that out or do you want to figure it out there and only send back relevant information? I think the answer is is B because you also don't have to build all that bandwidth. Think of yeah, just the backhaul required to support something like that when you're over when you've over centralized. So I think there's no question we have to rearchitect and rethink uh, how the topologies of how we're connected to the marketplace, how we're connected to our customers, how we're connected to our supply chain, because we're not going to be pushing a lot more processing power and smarts out to the edge, or we're going to have to work way too hard to build huge infrastructure to be able to pipe the dumb data back to our organizations to sort through it, which I don't think is the answer. So I, I think what we're going to see is analytics, um, especially at, at a tactical level, is going to flow out to the edge and the strategic pieces, taking the, the meaningful messages, that will be sorted through sent more centrally. So I, I think that's the kind of architecture we're talking about mm. evolving to. But yeah, this is what we're talking about. We're trying to sort, we're starting to work through this right now. Interesting. And I mean, for organizations who are suddenly getting all this information and maybe layering analytics on it and coming up with insights that they've never had before. What are they going to do with all that information now? Well, I think, um, you know, this reflects another big trend, you know, perhaps one of the biggest trends in the technology industry is we're moving away from selling individual objects or, or things to more providing services. And the, the companies of the future are going to be providing uh, uh, sustainable services that they they meter out themselves, right? So, you know, I will secure your home by looking at all the data coming off of uh, your devices, or I'll go into the hospital room and I'll holistically monitor with artificial intelligence capabilities this patient uh, at this very high level of service uh, to meet these quality requirements, right? Uh, so those are the kinds of things new service offerings will be possible because you'll have this this unparalleled view over whatever's happening in any given domain, right? So as it gets more and more instrumented with IoT, we'll be able to then, uh, companies can then build these value added services that they can meter forever, right? As opposed to selling one thing and maybe some maintenance on that on that thing over time and then hoping the customer buys again. Now it's about building this very much closer business partnership built on these, these IoT enabled services which again only work because you have analytics generating the data and the insights to, to to drive the business. Awesome. Yeah. Have you come across any interesting uh, examples of, of where this has been this has been rolled out? 
so, I mean, I think we all know uh, that IoT has been around for a while and things like airplanes and trains and now, you know, cars now have a lot of this. But um, in fact, you know, this is the perfect teaser to what uh, I'll be talking about next week uh, in Frankfurt at Leonardo Live. I'm bringing three hard hitting new examples showing how leading organizations, you know, companies, um, this is not the, the company, but comp uh, companies like GE and others are rethinking everything that we just said to create much more compelling service offerings that are far more connected continuously to customers. So I got three great case studies. I hope that those listening will come by and otherwise I'll, I'll blog about it after the fact. But uh, yeah, no, it's, an it's an exciting time. Hope you don't mind it. I would, uh, <laughs> you're we, you're uh, holding back. We all, use it as a theater. All, always leave them wanting more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Leonardo Live is next week. For anyone who uh, is listening to this after the publication date, Leonardo Live is July 11th and 12th, 2017. Uh, today is July 6th, Thursday, July 6th. We will be publishing this probably tomorrow, July 7th. So you still have a few days. Uh, if you're not going to be in Frankfurt, then look out for Dion's blog post. Dion, where will you be publishing the blog post? Uh, that'll most likely be uh, on uh, dianehinchcliffe.com. Awesome. And if people want to know more about you, Dion, or find out, follow you online, anything like that, any uh, particular sites, accounts, whatever they should be following? Uh, well, always uh, catch my ZDNet blog. I, I go deep on a lot of these topics, um, and that's easy to find. But you can always follow me on Twitter at D Hinchcliffe uh, for uh, all my links to all my latest writing. Awesome. I'll put links to those in the uh, show notes of this uh, podcast as well. Uh, and uh, if anyone else, if anyone wants to get more detail on that, come along to Leonardo Live in Frankfurt, July 11th and 12th. And uh, you can catch Dion there and listen to his awesome, awesome uh, talk with his three use cases that he's teased us with. Dion, thanks a million for taking the time out to come to the show today. It's been awesome. Oh, it's my pleasure, Tom. Thank you very much.